This is going to be a study on the angel of the Lord, who is by far the most powerful and mighty angel in all the scriptures, and this will be a study on his powers and characteristics, and we will find out the identity of the angel of the Lord. Many believe that Satan or Michael the archangel are the most powerful characters in all the scriptures, but they are mistaken because the angel of the Lord is by far the most powerful. If you've read Judges chapter 6 and verse 21, it says, Then the angel of the Lord that put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. By this verse, we can see that the angel of the Lord can appear and disappear at will. And Jesus Christ does the same thing according to Luke twenty four thirty one. This quality of being able to go invisible and visible anytime you want is sought after by many people. They talk about it in the movies like the invisible man. And I've even heard the military has made invisibility suits, which it probably isn't true. But men are seeking this quality because this makes you even more of a threat to an enemy. The angel of the Lord appears to more human beings in the scriptures than Satan. And the angel of the Lord goes and does as he pleases. Satan, on the other hand, has a tight leash. He can't do anything without getting permission from God. Read Job chapter 1, for example, when Satan has to get permission before he torments Job. And not only this, but Looking at Judges 6.21, we see that the angel of the Lord can call up fire. And of course, Satan counterfeits this in the Bible, if you've read the book of Revelation. The angel of the Lord can kill masses of people at one time. In Second Kings 19.35, he kills 185,000 men in one night. He is literally a one-man army. The uh, superhero craze tries to make the superhero characters look like a one-man army. But this character, the angel of the Lord from the Bible, is an actual being who is alive right now. And when he came down to the camp of the Assyrians, they probably underestimated him because he is just one man, but he is a one-man army. He is a man of war. And as God does many times, the angel of the Lord can talk to someone from heaven. In Genesis twenty two eleven it says and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and so you see here the angel of the Lord got his voice from heaven all the way down to where Abraham was. So he can get his voice up to a very high volume. Imagine how loud it will be with all the angelic creatures praising God with voices like the angel of the Lord's voice. The Lord Jesus Christ also has a strong voice that can reach the earth from heaven. And one day he is going to say, Come up hither at the rapture, and we are going to hear it from the earth. And to everyone else on the earth it will sound like thunder, according to John twelve twenty nine. And we also know from Scripture that the angel of the Lord has a sword. In Numbers 22, the angel of the Lord gets in the way of Balaam, who is riding on his ass in Numbers 22. And it says in verse 23, And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the, in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And then in Matthew 10.34, Jesus Christ said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. At the second coming, Jesus Christ comes back with a sharp two-edged sword. So Jesus Christ has a sword the angel of the Lord has a sword. And we can see from this that the Lord God believes in weapons. In Isaiah 27, 1, it talks about how he is going to slay the dragon that is in the sea. But I imagine the sword the angel of the Lord carries probably weighs more than the sword of Goliath. And the angel of the Lord wouldn't let Balaam get past him. If you see in Numbers 22, 24, and 26, it says, And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place 
where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. So the angel of the Lord can be used as a guard, guarding someone from doing something. God used the cherubim to guard the way of the tree of life. The angel of the Lord would have been an even greater guard than a cherub. He would be the ultimate bodyguard. The angel of the Lord can fight for a people or against a people without even being noticed. And if the angel of the Lord is on your side, you can pretty much guarantee that you're unbeatable. The thing is, you have to have your eyes opened before you can see him. For example, in Numbers 22 and verse 31, it says, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. So notice, Balaam doesn't even try to fight him. He automatically bows down to worship. And when the angel of the Lord came to Samson's parents, he wouldn't tell them his name. In Judges thirteen seventeen and 18, it says, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou ask thus after my name, seeing it is secret? And what does this remind you of? Every superhero character hides their identity. Peter Parker, Clark Kent, and any, any other knockoff superhero will keep their name secret. So the angel of the Lord's name is secret. Similar to how no one knew the name of Jesus in the Old Testament. Proverbs 30 and verse 4 says, Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. So, no one knew Jesus' name in the Old Testament. No one knew the angel of the Lord's name. The angel of the Lord is also a helper and comforter of God's men. Notice that he gives Elijah strength in a time of weakness in 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8. Elijah was having de depressing thoughts and he was ready to die, requesting himself that he might die. And the angel of the Lord brought him something to eat and encouraged him. If that were the devil, he would have just said, Go ahead and hang yourself by this juniper tree, Elijah. He wouldn't have comforted him. Satan is the opposite of the angel of the Lord. Moving on, though, we see that the angel of the Lord can come to you in your dreams. In Matthew 2.13, it says, And when they de were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So God did the same thing many times. He came to men in their dreams. While the angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream, warning them and telling them how to stay alive, Satan will come in your dreams with dirty thoughts and things that lead to death. He's the opposite. And when the apostles were in the prison, the angel of the Lord broke them out. This is just like Jesus who can deliver us from the bondage of the world. In Acts 5, 19 and 20, it says, But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And then in Acts 12, 7 and 8, it says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. So the angel of the Lord doesn't just have supernatural strength to break chains. He can simply make the chains fall off. Unclean spirits have the power to break chains and fetters as they did when they inhabited the maniac. But can they make the chains fall off? Jesus Christ can make the chains of sin and Satan fall off of you if you seek him through Bible reading and prayer. 
But next we see that while Satan wants to be like the Most High and wants to get all the glory, he will lead men to get glory for themselves because then he gets glory behind the scenes. The angel of the Lord does the opposite. If you look at Acts twelve twenty one through 23, it says, And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So the angel of the Lord kills a man, because the man didn't give God the glory. Herod was a big shot, arrayed in royal apparel. The angel of the Lord was no respecter of persons. He smote him anyway. Herod was wicked on the inside, and God looks on the heart. Compare this to how Jesus Christ knows the thoughts of the heart. While he was here on earth walking and talking in the flesh, he know he knew the thoughts of the Pharisees. But next we see that the angel of the Lord is a deliverer. In Psalms thirty four seven, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. At the same time he can be the greatest enemy to those who bully God's people. Psalms thirty five, five and six says, Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. The angel of the Lord is one, is the one who bullies the bullies. Notice that the mighty King David, who wasn't afraid of Goliath, greatly feared the angel of the Lord. In First Chronicles twenty one fifteen through sixteen. And while David was afraid of the angel of the Lord, Joshua wasn't afraid. And this shows that Joshua's heart was right at the set, at the time that he saw the angel of the Lord. In Joshua five thirteen and 15, it talks about Joshua meeting the angel of the Lord. It says, And it came to pass when Joshua was, was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us? Or for our adversaries. And he said nay. But as captain of the host of the Lord. Am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. And did worship. And said unto him. What saith my Lord unto his servant. And the captain of the Lord's host. Said unto Joshua. Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. For the place whereon thou standest. Is holy. And Joshua did so. So if you haven't figured out by now, the angel of the Lord is simply the Old Testament appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice how Joshua bowed down to the angel and he accepted the worship. The angel accepted the worship from Joshua. An angel wouldn't accept the worship unless it was a fallen angel. This proves the angel of the Lord is God, meaning an appearance of the Lord when you say angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord is an appearance of the Lord. Also notice in verse 13 of Joshua chapter 5, it calls the angel of the Lord a man. The angel of the Lord is God manifesting himself. He told Joshua the place whereon he is standing is holy ground. The same thing the angel of the Lord told Moses when he appeared to him in a bush. The ground is holy because the angel of the Lord is God himself. When the angel of the Lord was appearing to Gideon, Gideon thought he was going to die because he saw God face to face, as it says in Judges six twenty two and 23. And Paul, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, calls an angel of God, Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. If you look at Galatians 4, 14, it says, In my temptation which was in my flesh, he despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. And God says himself that he, is, he, the, he has an angel. In Daniel 6.22 it says, My God hath sent his angel. And the angel of the Lord, God himself, shut the lion's mouth. 
as it says in Daniel 6.22, My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths. And this is what God is going to do to the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan, who is referred to as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And then in Judges 6, 22 and 23, it says, And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. So it calls the, an the angel of the Lord, Lord. In Judges 6.23 it says, And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, for thou shalt not die. And then in Isaiah 63.9 it says, In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them, and he bare them, and carried them, all the days of old. That's talking about God. It says in all their affliction he, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence. So right there it says the angel of his presence. So God in the Old Testament showed himself as the angel of the Lord. In the New Testament he showed himself as Jesus Christ. You need to understand the Trinity. The Bible word for the Trinity is the Godhead. Which is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's one God, but He can manifest Himself in more than one way. And that's what He did in the angel, with the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. But if you're not saved, the last thing you should be doing right now is trying to understand the Bible. If you're not saved, then you need to realize that you are a guilty sinner and realize that you can't save yourself. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it gives the gospel. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And if you will put your trust in that to get you to heaven, then you can be saved and have eternal life. You put your trust in Jesus Christ and rely on what he did on the cross as payment for your sin. The reason you need a Savior is because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the price you have to pay for being a sinner is spending eternity in hell. But you can get your sins taken away if you will come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are. Acknowledge what you are. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For, and the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved in Romans 10. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner you are and believe on Him today. And then you can get in the Bible and learn all types of Bible truth. Before you're saved, you don't really understand the Bible. You can't get it. The Bible explains that the natural man doesn't get the words of God. If you want to understand the Bible, then get saved. But I hope that this study has helped you figure out who the angel of the Lord is. 
If you don't believe the angel of the Lord is God, that's fine. But I believe the angel of the Lord is simply an Old Testament appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ.